Hi, this is 365801 and this is another video for the hashtag 25 days of manga. I'm now doing the elf prompt, so I thought I should really include the elf in the video. He's been sitting on this table for a while now. Um, and the prompt for the elf is to watch the anime adaptation of a manga or, well, as in this case, um, it's actually a manga adaptation from an anime that's also a book. So the original source material is um, a light novel series written by Atsuko Asano, um, number six, nine volumes long in Japan and uh, as far as I know never published in English, which is at this point really sad because I know that people way back in 2011 when this anime came out were translating it so I haven't actually looked but I did have to do a bit of digging around I'll get to that at the end so I read number six um, I started reading it for the buzzword readathon but I only got a couple of volumes in so I decided to continue reading it for the start of the hashtag 25 days of manga because I liked it and I wanted to finish it and by the end I loved it it was great absolutely loved number six the manga I thought it was really good so I first watched number six back in 2011 when it was airing on Japanese television and it was getting a lot of buzz at the time because of the animation quality because the, the story um, was quite popular already in its um, novel form and because there were um, BL boys love elements within the story in Japanese so a lot of um, the audience were wondering how much of that was going to be portrayed because at that point in time in 2011 uh, there was not a lot of non-specific yaoi BL in normal mainstream anime and this anime was really putting that to the test were they going to include the elements of love interest between the two main characters because number six is not necessarily classed as a BL. It's a sci-fi, it's shoujo, it's um, it, it's kind of like um, the sci-fi in the same vein as um, Mary Shelley or Ursula Le Guin. It's that kind of really good female sci-fi. And so number six was in a way seen as a bit of a benchmark. Um, in terms of the storytelling was taking precedence and oh yeah by the way these two are a couple um, it was that kind of let's just be matter-of-fact about it which was really refreshing and so that's why it became so popular and so many people in Japan at the time were really raving about it they were like oh this is actually they're showing what we want to see um, the actual story <laughs> So um, I do remember, I recall having this conversation uh, with a particular student that I was teaching at the time because they all knew I was total um, otaku. I would go into class with um, a, like a character fan because it would be hot when I'd start introduce myself and um, they all had fans and things like that so I had my own little fan as well and I'd have Hunter Hunter on it so that basically just endeared me to every student that um, knew me. So. Um, yeah, they all knew I was a bit of an otaku, so I'd get um, a question from um, this particular otaku student um, and she would say, are you watching anything recently? So, Saikin atarashi anime mite masu ka? And I was like, hmm, number six, omoshiroi. Ah, number six, ne, ne, number six. Number six wa are desu ne, are. And I was, was quite perplexed, like, are? Like, in my head I'm thinking, are is just that, like that over there, like are, what? And she went, are ne, are. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> um, and so she was like, are, are. And she gave me this really big theatrical wink. And I was like, oh, are, hai, are desu ne. Hmm, sensei, are ga suki desu ka? Ma, are ga suki? Ma, so, so mo? Ah, so desu ka? Hmm, ja. 
she was just so cute about it. Like that whole I'm a Fujoshi is my teacher a Fujoshi too <laughs> kind of trying to figure out. But because I was just like, yeah, but I watch lots of things because I do watch lots of things and yeah, I read lots of things because I read lots of things. So I was never, I never uh, really put it out there that I was like a huge Fujoshi or anything. Because in a way I am, but I also am not. I like lots of things. So um, at that point in time, I was just burgeoning, I would say burgeoning. So um, I love that she was able to pick up on that because that was such a prevalent thing in the media about this anime. Like, oh, there's Are in it. <laughs> so whenever I see number six, I always think of that conversation, the Are conversation. Um, yeah, so I had watched it. I have... Um, I remember watching it and loving it and thinking it was great and getting really invested in the story and being totally confused most of the time while watching it because some of the things didn't quite add up or make sense in my mind. And then the ending came and I was like, what? And I do recall being a bit disappointed about the ending and finding out what that was it kind of thing. And so... It was nice to go back and, and actually read the manga and find out what was written as a manga story. And it made so much more sense. I felt so much more invested in the story by reading it. And, um, and some of the plot points made so much more sense because I was reading it and it was explained a lot more. And, and it was that whole, you know, like exposition was made, but it wasn't overly heavy handed. and. I, I think the anime did a good job of condensing it down into only 11 episodes. I was kind of shocked. Like, I got to the 11th episode re-watching it and kind of went, Wait, is, it, is that it? Is that it? There was more in the, there was more in the manga. Hold on, what? And I actually think the manga shows more than the book because I had to go and do some research because I thought, well, which is the original ending? Because there's an ending in the manga that feels satisfying, that feels like, yeah, I like this ending, this feels good. And then the ending for the anime felt rushed and also left desperately hanging. And I've been, I've been, you know, taken down a road or two before with some anime <laughs> where you get left hanging. Um, there's some baseball, like there's some gambling ones, there's always gambling ones that leave you hanging and there's a baseball one I'm trying to remember what it's called one outs oh my god one outs if you have watched one outs you get so invested it is fabulous it's a brilliant anime and it's based on a manga I think that that I'm not sure if that continued to get published but the guy who makes the animes always makes them really good and then like leaves you hanging so that you have to go and <laughs> buy the manga but if you can't because it's not in English if it has been put into English, please let me know because one outs, one outs, oh, it's such a good anime and you get so invested and then you're literally just cut off and you have no idea how it ends. And it's like right before the big cliffhanger, they just leave you. So yeah, it, number six is not as bad as that, but it still felt really like, what? No, but no. You can't leave it like that. And also, what was going on? So, re-watching the anime made me think, okay, I need to find out what's the actual story because the anime has one and the manga has one. So I did have to do a bit of digging around on the internet and find lots of live journal, <laughs> yes, back to live journal again, um, entries from back in 2011 where they were discussing it and some people had been doing some uh, readings of the novel and doing some summaries of the chapters and so I read a few of those so it made sense so the manga version I think is more accurate of a portrayal of the novel version and the anime kind of had to do the ending in a way that satisfied whatever needed to be satisfied at that point um, I did find it satisfying because they did include all of the main things that needed to happen but it just felt so rushed and um, and there were some things that happened in the anime that didn't happen in the manga. Certain characters' endings and certain characters just getting written out and and um, 
Rikiga and Inukashi, uh, the the dog keeper or dog loan, um, their kind of story, they seem to be a lot more involved in some areas. It just felt um, like there was a little bit of a divergence from the story, if the manga is an accurate portrayal of the novel. Um, do I recommend the anime? Yes, of course, wholeheartedly, but I also recommend that you read the manga. And I do find that I was more invested emotionally with the manga. I feel like it made a lot more sense. The story flowed better. Um, you got a lot more context for events. So um, I recommend them both. The music's fantastic in the anime. The acting, the voice actors are fantastic. Um, I, I watched the ones with the Japanese, obviously. Um, I don't mind subtitles and I'm not, I'm a little bit averse to watching dub, I'm afraid, now, at this stage. Um, so yeah, I would watch the anime, but I would also read this manga, and if you speak Japanese, I would go get the books too, and find out what exactly um, was going on at the end. So that's something to work towards in my Japanese studies. So yeah, for the elf prompt, number six. It was great. It was nice to revisit it. It felt very natsukashi, nostalgic. It felt um, like I'd gone back almost 10 years. Wow. 2020 soon. So yeah, eight years. That's quite a long time ago. So yeah, it's a good anime and I recommend it. Merry Christmas.